we should have shouted from the rooftops that a system had been built in which banks were too important to fail, that banks had grown too quickly and borrowed too much, and that so-called light touch regulation hadn't prevented any of this. Well, we're joined now by uh, Chris Giles, Economics Editor at the Financial Times. Um, Chris, something of a mea culpa then from uh, Mervyn King in that speech. Do you think that he has kind of um, come clean about his role? What do you make of the comments he's made and his, 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 uh, the way he's portrayed his role in this crisis? Well, I think in some sense he's uh, admitted some errors that he didn't shout loud enough. But remember, this is not shouting loud enough about other people's mistakes. Uh, when the Bank of England actually had, it had two core purposes before the crisis. One was monetary policy, monetary stability, and the other one was financial stability. It, its core purpose was to ensure financial stability. And really what Mervyn King as the governor of the Bank of England did when he became governor in 2003 was essentially not to do very much on that second side and to downgrade it as part of the Bank of England. So in lots of ways he's not really opening up the to saying actually the Bank of England wasn't looking hard enough. Not only were they not shouting hard enough, but they weren't looking hard enough for what was going wrong in the financial system. Um, were they focusing too much on inflation as well? I mean, he, he says something like uh, that, that he thought controlling inflation was sufficient enough for a stable economy and that he, he just simply didn't imagine the scale of the disaster that would occur when the risks finally crystallized. Well, the ultimate intellectual failing was one that was common to many people, I mean, including us here at the Financial Times, was that we often thought that if you controlled the economy, particularly if you in in controlled inflation, which until 2007 the Bank of England did really rather successfully, then that was sufficient to creating a stable economy. Now that we have learned subsequently is totally not true and you can easily have an unstable economy while inflation is under control. This has happened across the advanced world and that is the sort of the big ultimate intellectual failure that was very widely shared and is something that we've all had to learn uh, was a mistake. Yeah, Chris, um, I guess the, the issue is, as he comes to the end of his tenure as the governor of the Bank of England, is if uh, we are going to see um, a, a, kind of a, a fixing of those issues with the next governor of the Bank of England, that intellectual failing, it's pretty hard to pin down who has the intellectual power um, and the strength of their convictions to be able to, uh, to, to, to make the right decision next time around, because surely the next governor of the Bank of England will have similar challenges, no matter what happens in the next stage of the crisis? I think this is a really crucial point. We cannot let it be just one person. And the Bank of England acts very much in a hierarchical fashion. The governor is essentially king. So what we need to ensure is that the next governor, whoever it might be, has lots of checks and balances, both from the deputy governors, there'll be three of them under the new structure, from the internal court, from externally from journalists and the press and the public, and from parliament. They need lots and lots of checks and balances so that they actually do their job rather better. They should welcome this. They shouldn't be trying to resist it, which is what they are actually trying to do at the moment, because it'll ultimately help them do the job better and ensure we have will be is a better guard against a, a, another financial crisis. And that's what's rather surprising at the moment, that the Bank of England has been resisting all the checks and balances that the Treasury Select Committee in particular have been suggesting and the Labour Party under Ed Balls. It's, it's funny though because typically after a crisis happens or when a crisis happens the next one isn't the same you know it happens somewhere else in a different type of way and then everybody's so focused on you know how to prevent things from the last crisis but they, they haven't called though for a full uh, review of the failures of the Bank of England Do you think they should or is it is it you know spilled milk under the bridge at this point absolutely you should call for a review because it's not just the actual policy errors, it's the institution as a whole. How did the institution work? How did the governor work within that institution that really matters to, to ensure that the institution is more effective at finding whatever the next crisis is going to be? Because you're right, it won't be the same as the last crisis. So we have to be sure when we're going to give this institution enormous powers, more powerful than almost any other advanced economy central bank, that we can be sure that the institution has the checks and balances so that it is more likely, not certain, but more likely to spot things next time around. Is it realistic, Chris, that this could work? I mean, surely ultimately there's such a huge amount of money flowing through the City of London that the mar that just the muscle of the market will cause another crisis of, of its own will at some point in the future, no matter how strong the regulation or the, uh, the, the, the structure of the Bank of England is. 
Well, there's no guarantee anything will work, and if we have another crisis, that will be proof that whatever we put in place hasn't worked. But we have to do our best because we now know that this crisis has not been just a small blip in the progress of Britain. It, is, it means we're still worse off, we're still 4% poorer than we were four years ago, and our ultimate growth rate looks now to be slower than we thought was reasonable. So we are now as a society much worse off and facing much more difficult pressures than looked possible in 2007, 2008. And so if we had another crisis, 10, 15, 20 years time, we really, really want to avoid it because we know they're very, very bad. Chris, very briefly, uh, you are the economics editor. Just when do you think the Bank of England is going to start to move on rates? I don't think they're going to move on rates for quite some time. If anything, in their May meeting, they might, I say might, uh, do a little bit more quantitative easing. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Chris Giles, economics editor at the Financial Times.